I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents, and I'm so excited because I'm at one of my favorite succulent specialty nurseries, Rojas Succulents, and I'm here with Carlos Rojas, who is the owner along with his mother who founded it, Rosalina Rojas. So tell us, Carlos, what makes this nursery special? Uh, it's special, one, one that it's family owned and also just the varieties, you know, people can come over here and, and just find a ton of varieties that they're not used to seeing and, and for us, that's what it's all about, you know, finding that plant that you don't have. Um, so the, the varieties here, it definitely brings a lot of people in. So you've grown, oh, phenomenally over what, the last 10 years from two greenhouses to how many and, and give us a sense of your inventory. Yeah, you know, for the past 10 years, we've been working super hard to fill every every spot we have on the property with as many greenhouses as we can. We have we have about 11 now. How, how large is the property? It's about an acre and a half, okay. you know, and uh, in those acre and a half, in that acre and a half, we've used it to the max, you know, but we've been able to fill it with Echeverias, Aeoniums, Aloe Veras, Cotyledons, a lot of different species that are just, that are good for potted plants and also for landscaping purposes. Um, super happy that we can share all that with everybody. Beautiful specimen. So we're going to walk around and Carlos is going to show us some of what he's extra proud of <laughs> and why you should make this a destination nursery. Echeveras are one of my favorite species and they can definitely, um, some of them can definitely take some good amount of sun. We have the Lady Aquarius right here in the middle Ooh. with some beautiful green color in the inside and then some red hues on the outside. We have the Echeveria mahogany, um, which oh, get yeah. in full sun get this bright, oh, bright red. They are stunning. Um, what I love about this family is their passion for what they do. I, I think, you know, seeing seeing your mom develop this as, as a hobby, but also a business, and then you learning from her and expanding it. It's what uh, the American dream is all about. It, it definitely is, it definitely is. And now that I see m my kids coming to the nursery and enjoying enjoying it the way that I did as a kid is so special oh, because wow. I want to be able to do the same. I mean, whether they go to college or whatever they do, I still want to teach them a love for plants. Um, that's something she taught me at a, at a young age. And I think as I got older, um, it, it's, it, it became part of me, you know, so it was easy to love this, super easy. We can grow so many aeolians here in Southern California and well, coastal California from the Bay Area South. I, I grew about a dozen or 15. How many do you think are, are actually available on the market? I would say, I mean, as far as what we have, we have about 20 to 30 of them, um, but I'm sure there's more. There's, sure. there's one that I love, and, and though we, we've been growing it for several years, it still catches you know, my attention every time I walk by it. When you start moving them into a little bit more sun, they get these brown, um, beautiful lines on the back oh. of them, and even on the front of the actual plant. But it's amazing what the time of the year and what the sun exposure can do. But yeah, these guys, I mean, we've grown them in full sun and shade, and they always seem to keep those beautiful little yellow in the middle. And you got the Aeonium Cyclops in bloom. In oh, full yeah. bloom. Hello, Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awesome plant. But the cool thing about it is if you, if you want to cut it, um, the bloom off you can actually get a couple babies or pups to come out of it oh. so it's not a it's not a complete loss that's good to know yeah so something like this i would definitely try to cut it right there okay and then from then on you'll get so some little babies to come out of right it right down in there mm -hmm. and then it'll offset yep it'll offset instead of just the whole what do you call it death bloom oh. you'll be able to save it that way and get some pups to come out of it that's so. a great tip mm -hmm. Sure. Stuff is growing. Some of it's a little small, but it's growing. It's going to get there in the next few months. So much of this is from stock that your mother oh, yeah. ac accumulated early. Definitely. She used to work for a nursery. Yeah, John and Mary Cooper out in Vista, yeah. out in Vista, California. And, and because of them, my mom was able to start her business many years ago and, and, and just go wild with growing. Isn't but, that yeah. great? But yeah, you know, it's yeah. all this propagated from her own stock. And that's what makes it special is that uh, we grew it in-house. Should all right. we go check out that? Uh... Please, lead on. All right. So what are you going to take us to see? We're going to go see that private collection in the back. They have some, some variegated stuff, some crested stuff, and, and some things that I feel are a little bit more for collectors. Your mom, when I last visited, was showing me two of her favorite specialties. Uh, cresting was one, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And also variegates. She has a lot of crested, a lot of variegated and she's made a few of her own hybrids. 
So this is Carlos's treasure chest for the collectibles, the rarities, the ones that um, have you excited. Is that right, Carlos? That's exactly right. Okay, well, show us. Yeah, this is, this is I'm, I'm so happy to have this spot back here. Um, I was able to fill it with varieties that I love, that I feel other, other collectors will love as well. Some of the variegated stuff, some of the crested stuff. But we'll start off with these Gasterias right here. I have some Gasterias right here that are, this is the Gasteria Batesiana. So you have them in two different varieties, which is the yellow form and also the white form. Um, they get really pretty. They get about a foot and a half wide, a foot tall. These guys, oh. these guys can definitely go on the ground and also stay as a potted plant. This, this is my luxury purchase. It's doing great, but I've been babying it. I've been keeping it in, in a bright shade. That's how these greenhouses are. That's why we paint them, so they can get that, um, that filtered sunlight. But, you know, yeah, these can actually go on the ground and be totally fine. <laughs> I think um, at $35 a pop, I might just <laughs> keep it in a pot. This pick up there where you're at, it gets kind of cold, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah I'm at 1,500 feet. Yep. A few, a few years ago, I imported this from Italy, but you know, I was, I've been able to grow it here and take pups from it and also propagate some in our stock. But we're super excited to get this one in bloom so we can get some seed to come out of it. So we have some variegated cotyledons over here, unduladas and orbiculadas. Uh, that's <gasps> the is, Crashula falcata. This is falcata. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it variegated. Variegated, and uh, I've been able to propagate like It had a beautiful variegated head on it, and I actually cut it. You can actually see where I propagated it. Before and then the new baby came out variegated again, which was my goal with it, and it's a mission accomplished. Well, I'm used to seeing falcata as gray, right. and then uh, the green you'd mm -hmm. think would be more common, but it's not. And so you've actually got a green variegate. That's, yeah, that's pretty... one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Oh, and I got one of these from you, too. Oh, the Grenovias. They're an amazing plant, but it seems to me that more people like them when they're in their dormancy period. Oh, when uh, they're tight. Yeah, because during summertime, they turn colors and they become like little rosebuds. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely a good seller, and, and I have about five different kinds right here. I have the Grenovia Pink Maple, Grenovia Canarii, Grenovia Pandora, Grenovia Hierro, and then Grenovia Lola. And then we have um, we have some other ones right here that are that are quite special to me. I I think these Juarez Abrina variegated variety, the Lifesaver flower. So the flower is the same. The flower is the same. But what you're looking at the rest of the year is this really interesting variegate. Exactly. And I don't know if you can kind of see the variegated on these white streaks to do them instead of just being green. Huh. Um, A variegated golem jade. Mm -hmm. Is this an echeveria? Yeah, it's a purposorum. So. Oh, and here's a variegate. This is a variegated uh, echeveria. Yeah, a little here. variegated prolifica. Variegated chaviana, pretty awesome as well. This is actually one of the hybrids that my mom made a few years back, and we haven't named it yet. It, we'll just call him Rojas Hybrid for now. Yeah. <laughs> pretty awesome plant. My mom actually gave me this one. That plant is 17 year, years of age now, and oh. uh, I've been able to get little pups off of it or little really? seedlings that oh. i grew over the years this looks like a cross between a cactus and an ice plant right it sure does just because of those purple blooms that those ice plants get all the time huh it totally looks mesembryanthemish oh look at these yeah these are all in the parodia family this is a new hybrid um and we're hoping to get to flower soon so we can get some seed cobra yeah the, the textures and the, the lines that it gets on it is, is so unique compared to other apuntias oh and look at this um steno cactus yeah well here oh, okay which is which this one's a steno cactus and this one is an echinopsis icerii um, okay crazy variegation some little monstrous cactus in the back over there Dudley is. This is a Dudley Britoniae. Dudley Anoma. Girl, they clump up and they stay super small. Yeah, they're one of the more smaller varieties of Dudley. That's a very emerald ripple. Nice and variegated. But you can see this is how after I, I you know propagate it, uh -huh. the babies how they pop out from where I actually cut it. I gotta have this. The Hawarthia limifolia. Yeah, limifolia variegata. Do you ever have anybody come through here and whap the plants with their purse? Oh, yeah. 
happens, it happens. But I think people that have come back oh, over time, they know to carry the purse in front of them, like you. You know, that's because sometimes. That, but I, even me, my shirt, it gets stuck on something, and there goes the whole tray falling. What can you do? I mean, these pants yeah. are so hardy. They'll, they, you know, they won't, they won't get mad at me. They'll give me yeah. a try. <laughs> They're tough. They are. Oh, and you also do mail order too, don't we you? We do. We have an online website and also through PayPal, Instagram, and Facebook. We do a lot of those things. We do a lot of things for events and stuff like that. In a couple of weeks, they'll be at the size that we want them to, and then we'll put them moss, and they'll be ready to go to their to their homes. They're the closest thing to plastic in the plant kingdom. Mm -hmm. Your mom uses what? Apple cider vinegar and Apple joy glass. soap as a pest control? How does that work? She does. I mean, she has a 100-gallon barrel that she... Um, it's connected to her hose and from there it sucks all the, you know, the water from that barrel, but she'll just mix a, a, a whole cup of apple cider vinegar with a half bottle of lemon scented joy soap into that barrel and then from there it just all mixes and that's what we water. Wait, you water it or you spray it when there's a pest or what? No, I mean we can, that as a preventative we water with it all the time. You water with soap? Mm -hmm. all and the vinegar? Time. All the time. Wait, yeah. wait, okay, okay, this is, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> So when you actually water the plants as a preventative, you water them with a dilute solution Every single time. of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and lemon scented joy soap. Yep. Well, I'll try to, to work out the ratios for people who want to try to do it on a home scale. Everything. It doesn't leave a residue? Nope, nope. Unlike alcohol, unlike other, or like neem oil sometimes, Yeah. Um, we can water with that any time of the year, whether it's 100 degrees out, uh, outside or 70 degrees it will never scar the plant and it doesn't hurt it in any way we like it i don't know how much benefits it has but <laughs> you know that's well, something that my mom taught me and i've just been able to use how many years has she been doing that oh gosh i don't know for as long as i can remember it. okay <laughs> i think when customers come they can definitely go on a little hunt and find something that they don't have and i think that makes it very special for people to come in and check us out and, and pretty much that's that's what we're here for we share our passion